Hello, hello, dear viewers. A very warm welcome to our channel. In this video, we are going to have a look at principle of operation of a manual transmission. This is a four-speed manual transmission section to solve the entire construction and uh, principle of operation. As you can see, here we have the clutch. The clutch will receive power from the engine flywheel and transmit it to the transmission gearbox. This is the input gear to the transmission. The input gear to the transmission will be connected to the counter gear. This is the input to the counter gear and the counter shaft has different gears that correspond to different speed gears. And on the output shaft, we can see there are different speed gears. Here we have one speed gear, here we have another speed gear, and here we have another speed gear. And there is a reverse idler that is shown right behind there. So this is the entire construction of a four-speed manual transmission. Now when we see which gear corresponds to which gear, the smallest gear on the counter shaft, which is right here, is used for first gear. So this the smallest gear on the counter shaft will be used for first gear. And the gear that is a little bigger than this will be for second gear. The second smallest gear out of these speed gears, the second smallest gear will be this one. So this gear corresponds to gear number two. So this is for gear number two. And right here we have for gear number three and gear number four is direct drive. So these are the different gears that are corresponding to their speed. When this smaller gear is driving this is for gear, that is number one gear. So when gear number one is selected, when gear one is selected, this small gear will engage to this hub and this hub will engage to the output shaft. When second gear is selected, this speed gear is in constant mesh with the second speed gear on the output shaft. But the second speed gear on the output shaft is riding on a roller bearing, so it is not directly connected to the shaft. It's not directly connected to the transmission shaft, so it is free spinning. As you can see, now the output shaft is freely spinning, but the speed gears are not rotating. The output shaft is being turned manually, but the speed gears are not turning with the output shaft. This indicates that these speed gears, they are installed on a roller bearing. So there is no direct contact between the speed gears and the output shaft. Only when this synchronizer assembly is engaged, for example, when this synchronizer assembly is shifted to this side, this is connected to the output shaft. As you can see, it is riding with the output shaft. When this is sliding and meshing on this shift dog tease of second speed gear, then this speed gear will be joined to the output shaft through this synchronizer sleeve assembly. Same thing is true for third gear. Third gear, as you can see, the gear is not running with the output shaft, but when this synchronizer and sleeve assembly slides to this side, and when some part of this slide, this sleeve assembly will mesh with this shift dock, only then the third gear will be connected to the output shaft. So this is the internal construction. And for first gear, we will be sliding this spur gear. And if we slide it and engage it in this counter shaft's first speed gear, and then that will drive first gear. For idler gear, we will be introducing a counter gear, which is right there in the back side. There is a counter gear. If we introduce a counter gear that would engage partly to this speed gear and partly to this gear, then that will be reverse gear. So that is the principle of operation. Let's turn it on and see how all the gears are shifted. For example, let's turn it on. As you can see now, there is no gear selected. So the counter shaft is rotating alone. And the speed gears, because they are in constant mesh to the counter shaft gears, they are also rotating. But as you can see, the output shaft is not turning. So there is no speed selected. This is called the neutral gear. So on neutral, the speed gears are spinning because they are in constant mesh to the counter shaft, but the output shaft is not rotating. Now, in order to engage first gear, let's slide this and then slide it and engage it to this gear. That will select first gear. In order to do that, first power flow from the clutch to the transmission gearbox has to be interrupted. That is done by depressing the clutch. When the clutch pedal is depressed, power flow from the clutch 
from the engine to the transmission input gear will be interrupted. So then these gears, they can easily be selected. Let's do that and have a look at how first gear is selected. Now let's depress the clutch. When the clutch pedal is depressed, gears will stop removing. And then let's put it to first gear. Look at the first gear for speed number one. It's engaged. Now the output shaft has started traveling because first gear is selected. Now, as you can see, the larger gear on the output shaft is meshed to the smaller gear on the counter shaft by sliding this selector sleeve. So now, engine power from the input, it will go to the counter shaft. And from the counter shaft, first gear, it will go to gear number one. And then it will go to the output shaft. And finally, we have the vehicle running on first gear. Now this will produce the largest torque as speed and torque are inversely related. When reduced the speed is there, torque will be increased. So this gear has to turn multiple times in order to rotate this once and that will multiply torque. But because the smaller gear is driving a larger gear, the speed will be reduced. So we will have a reduced speed on first gear, but we have a torque that is multiplied in proportion to the reduction of speed and so first gear will have a larger torque. Now in order to engage second gear, we will depress the clutch pedal, we will disengage this from the speed gear, from the counter gear, and then we will slide this sleeve and mesh it to this shift dog. As you can see now the output shaft and uh, this sleeve assembly is rotating at same speed, but this gear speed is slightly running faster due to the gear ratio. This gear is slightly bigger than this, and this gear is slightly smaller than this. So due to that, there is a speed difference. As you can see, there is a speed difference. This speed gear is running a little faster than the output shaft, which is being driven at first gear speed. Now, when we select this gear, we slide it, and this sleeve will join this and this together, and that will shift to second speed gear. Let's do that. In order to do that, first we depress the clutch so that power flow will be interrupted. Then put it in neutral. Then force it, as you can see, right here, second gear is selected. Now when second gear is selected, the speed of the transmission will be a little higher than the first gear, but torque will be reduced. Now engine power from the transmission clutch will be joined to the input shaft, to the counter shaft, then from the counter shaft, second speed gear, it is going to the second speed gear of the output shaft. And then due to this sleeve selection, it is going to the output shaft. So this is how second gear is selected. In order to put it in third gear, when we want to increase the speed, we have to select third gear. As you can see now also, this sleeve, the entire sleeve assembly has similar speed to the output shaft, which is now in second gear. But look at this. This is a speed gear for third gear. As you can see, the third gear is running a little faster than the output shaft speed. So when the third gear is selected, the output shaft will be faster than the second gear. But because we have increased speed, torque will be a little reduced. Now let's go ahead, depress the clutch, put it in neutral by disengaging the second speed gear, and then select third gear gear. Third gear. Just have a look at right here what is happening. First, we will disengage the second gear, and then we will select speed for third gear. In order to do that, first depress the clutch. This is how it is driven. We depress the clutch, then we disengage second gear, and then we proceed to selecting third gear. Look what is happening to third gear. Press the clutch, third gear is selected now. Now when third gear is selected, Vehicle speed will increase slightly because now the gear ratio has changed. Engine power from the input shaft to the counter shaft, then from the counter shaft, third gear, it will go to the third speed gear on the output shaft. The entire assembly is now driven by the third gear speed. So this gear ratio is responsible for driving the vehicle now. The speed has increased. The direction of rotation is similar. The speed has increased due to the change in gear ratio. When we want to proceed to force gear, force gear is a direct drive. 
on this vehicle, on this engine, for the gear is a direct drive. As you can see right here, there is an output shaft that is being driven by third gear speed. But when you look at the input shaft, the input shaft is running a little faster than the output shaft. So by sliding this sleeve assembly to this side and engaging it directly to the input shaft, that will make the vehicle to be driven on a direct drive. The direct drive is gear four, so let's shift it. First, we depress the clutch, disengage that gear, and then by pushing it further forward, we will engage force gear. Now, this is a direct drive. There is no speed reduction. There is no torque multiplication. Engine speed is directly transferred from the input gear to the sleeve, from the sleeve to the output shaft. Then it goes to the differential and the driven wheel. This is a direct drive. On a direct drive, there is no need of using the counter because the vehicle is shifted directly to the input gear. So engine speed, engine torque will go directly without no reduction. So this is how force gear is selected. Now, in order to select reverse gear, if you want to go on reverse, all we have to do is this will remain as it is. First gear on the counter shaft will remain as it is. And then we will slide that idler. There is an idler gear that in the back. We will slide that idler and engage it in between these two. First, let's disengage force gear. Now force gear is disengaged. Now, when we select reverse gear, all we have to do is we slide an idler gear right there. And then part of that idler tease will mesh with the small gear on the counter shaft. And the other half part of the idler gear will engage to this speed gear. So it will be in such a fashion. It will be inserted in such a fashion. Part of it will be on here and part of it will be on the counter gear. And by doing so, we have inserted an idler gear between this speed gear, this counter gear, and the speed gear for gear number one. So this is how reverse is selected. Let's turn it on and engage reverse gear. Now you might have observed the direction of rotation for the previous gears. Now let's see how it is changing when it is selected on reverse gear. Now this is the reverse gear. Vehicle is being driven on reverse. As you can see, the direction of rotation has changed. The direction of rotation of the output shaft has changed. The output shaft is rotating this way. The previous gears are still rotating to the normal direction because they are installed on a roller bearing, but the output shaft is rotating in a reverse direction. Now for the reverse gear, engine power will be from the input to the counter shaft, from the counter shaft first gear to the idler gear, and from the idler gear to speed gear for gear number one. So by inserting an idler gear, we can change direction of rotation. So this is how reverse gear is selected on this particular gearbox. Simply, this is how a four-speed manual transmission operates. This one is a section transmission taken from a small automobile in order to demonstrate the internal construction of a manual transmission four-speed gear. Well, dear viewers, that is all we have for you regarding the principle of operation and construction of a manual transmission four-speed gearbox. If you like this video, please smash the like button. If you are new here, do consider subscribing and turn on notifications so that you will be notified whenever we come up with another video. Until then, stay safe.